I'm currently out on Oxford High Street, um, just at the moment opposite St Mary the Virgin Church. Um, we have the centre of town that way, Carfax, and then St Aldate's down the other way. Now, the other week, you may remember that I was doing a video over the road at St Virgin the Mary's Church, um, and I was talking about Magpie Lane. So, what I'll do is I'm going to flip the camera around and you can walk down with me. Um, excuse the three yard skip halfway down, I did try doing this when there was nothing down there because um, there was a scaffold built down here not that long ago um, but now they seem to have put a skip in the centre so there's nothing I can do I'm afraid um, we'll do a little talk about some of the buildings down there a bit of the history of uh, Magpie Lane and its name changes um, and then we're also going to go into one of the buildings down there so I'll just turn the camera on now and you can walk with me down Magpie Lane Magpie Lane is a little lane just off of Oxford High Street in between Oriel College which is just there on our right and the Quad Bar and Restaurant, which is just on our left. As you walk down Magpie Lane, come down, we've got a beautiful, I'm not sure whose coat of arms that is, if it's a, a college's coat of arms or not, I'll have to have a little look into that. As I said, we have Oriel College on our right, so this is the main, one of the, the quads on the other side of this wall um, for Oriel College. Now, well, look at some of these buildings. As we come down here, on this building here, we have the date of 1588. Again, I will try and find that little bit of history about these buildings. We couldn't find too much, because if a building's not very important, it doesn't always have a decent writer. This one, I'm sure, will be in some of the uh, documents that I've got, being that it's from uh, 1588. Um, it'll be nice to find out for you. You can see the construction, the stepped construction of the building next door. Now, they done the, this sort of stepped construction so that you've got the maximum amount of um, floor space for the minimal amount of uh, floor space, I suppose, on the actual ground. So obviously, where the, uh, the building finishes there, it's probably about, I don't know, maybe another five, 600 mil out from the top. So um, you've obviously gained probably about half a meter at the, at the top there. Um, we've got a beautiful old style coach like there, which was probably at one point um, gas filled or gas lamp, um, maybe even candle lamp back in, the, uh, back in the 16th and 17th century. Now, the reason that Magpie Lane has got a lot of history and um, has um, a, a wonderful bit of history in fact, um, now you have to excuse my French here, um, but there is no two ways of doing this. Magpie Lane um, in the 13th century was also, well, was known as Grope Cunt Lane. Um, now the reason it was called Grope Cunt Lane is because this is where the prostitutes plied their trade. Um, there was many of um, this na named lanes throughout the country. I do believe there was, London had several. There was one in Bristol, one in York, one in Shrewsbury, Newcastle, Worcester, Hereford and Southampton. Um, there was one in Norwich um, which actually got the name um, Turpus Vicus which actually means the shameful street in Latin. Um, it's a shame that this one didn't have that name because I think that's quite a cool name, the shameful street. Um, but obviously with the university being the centre for learning around the world I think they wanted to um, have a better image than uh, its namesake as it was. Now, in, the 16, in 1605 on John Speed's map, this is actually shown as Grope or Grape Lane. A lot of the other places that I just mentioned also changed the name to Grape Lane, or they just completely went away from it, so that you, know, so you couldn't even tell its previous name. Now, in the 17th century, um, Grope Lane, as it were, just to, for the, I've said it enough times, um, Grope Lane was actually renamed Magpie Lane. Now I'm not sure where the alehouse was, but there was an alehouse somewhere along this road. I don't know where Russell is. Um, somewhere along this road, um, and outside of it, on one of uh, on the the board for the alehouse was a magpie. So they just coined the phrase Magpie Lane. Um, it was probably um, a local's name for the for the lane, and then it's obviously moved on, and then it was put onto maps. In the late 19th century, it was renamed Grove Street. That's mainly because I, I do believe where that gentleman is walking just in front of us, that is called Grove Street, and then Grove Street comes onto Magpie Lane. Now on the left hand side we've got Kybol Street which we're going to go down in a minute. Um, however in 1927 they had a rethink 
and they renamed it Magpie Lane after its historic alehouse that was on uh, upon the lane. Now, just before we get to Kaibol Street, we have this beautiful cross here. Now, it says 1818. It's got J something at the top and then a bit missing, and then GW. I do know that Magpie Lane was on the um, line of two parishes. So I think on the right hand side we had St Mary the Virgin um, Parish and then on the left hand side I can't remember but hopefully I've just put an inlay over the top of this and it explains exactly what parish that was in. Again walking down we've got a beautiful coach light on the left hand side. In the background against the beautiful blue sky um, that's Merton College's Chapel Tower. Um, which is absolutely gorgeous if we ever get a chance to film in there. Again, on the right hand side, this is still all Oriel. This is a much bigger, oh, in fact, we've got the other, another cross there. Which is what looks like a double J or a J with the J off the back of it. An S and a B. I may be wrong with that. But again, these may be um, marking the two, the two boundaries of the parishes. It's a beautiful old wall, very similar to um, Oxford's long wall or the old city wall that went round. Very high, it's probably about 20 foot high. Absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful lane and if you're ever down here in winter it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, as you can see we have an old gate on the right hand side. That one goes into Oriel and where Russell is now and all this on the left hand side is modern student accommodation. We are now at Kaibol Street. As I said in my previous video, um, when I've done a video of Logic Lane, Kaibol Street goes straight. So if we go straight down this lane here and that building in front of us wasn't there, we would be in Logic Lane. Since University College had the land, they made it into a dead end and they've obviously put buildings down the side. Now, I'm gonna leave that part because I believe so that goes down onto Merton Street down there and we're going to have a little wander down here and we're going to go and see where the prostitutes plied their trade. So this is Kaibol Twitching. Now again, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing of buildings but it is a beautiful stone. I mean, look at that lintel or the way that they've constructed the, the lintel just above the window. You don't normally see that, so they've got uniform bricks right across the top. Now, I don't know whether they're sat on a bit of wood or whether the bit of wood's behind and they're just an infill. But if you can see that how ununiform it is when I get to the top and how skew if that window is. Again, it sits out considerably. If I get right underneath it, you can see how much of a bow that window has. It sits out about a foot on the right-hand side. And if I get it in contrast with the other one, Again, you can see it on ununiform it was. Fair enough, these were built many years ago, so there's a lot of subsidence and the way that the building materials that they used in the time, the way that the wood dries out and misshapes, and things just settle over time. What we'll do now, we'll have a little walk through Kaibol Twitching. Um, I haven't got much history on this, but we'll have a look, see if there's any original features. And again, probably just have a look at some of these, these windows from the inside. So, because we've got another five window formation, a bit like the one round on, um, at number four on Beam Hall. So, I'll stop the video now, I'll get the keys out, we'll have a little walk in Kaibol. We've got to put our masks on, um, and we can have a little walk through together. I'm just going to take you inside the Kaibol Twitching. Um, now, me and Russell have been in Kobold Twitching um, very recently, and there isn't much to see in there. As you can quite imagine, it's been chopped and changed around. Um, it's now student accommodation. Um, but what we will do is there's some beautiful fireplaces in there um, that have also got some lovely, I don't know, 16th, 17th century um, porcelain tiles on, very much similar to Beam Hall, um, beautifully hand done. I'll take you in there. We'll show you a couple of the rooms that have got the exposed beams. But other than that, it's, it's pretty plain and, and student accommodation-like. Um, one thing that I do want to show you quickly, though, is this beautiful door knocker. Sometimes the hardware of the doors um, often gets overlooked. The door itself doesn't look very old, um, and it's got more modern sort of handles, and obviously all the locks and the Salto lock for, for modern security. But there is this beautiful, beautiful face 
on the door knocker. And I'm not sure how old that is or if we'd be able to find out. But what a lovely bit of craftsmanship. So, as I said, me and Russ will take you in there now. Um, there's only a couple of rooms to really look in there with exposed beams, um, but the fireplaces are, are what's the nicest to look at. Um, and the thought of who was huddled round that fire many years ago, either warming their self off up before, not warming self off, we won't go down that route, but warming their self up, ready for the ladies, or if the ladies were warming their self up, ready for the gentlemen, we'll never know. Um, I'll take you inside now and I'll show you a couple of the features. Okay, so this is one of um, the more um, older looking buildings or older looking rooms with the exp exposed beams. As you can see, they've all been painted reasonably recently. Um, gives you a, a good look at the structure of the building though. Oh, beautiful, excuse the uh, mattresses. Beautiful little niche there with a little bench and the, the window. Again, you can see the glass isn't very original. Now, this is a beautiful fireplace. So here we've got um, the depiction of different ships. Now, these look very 16th century. Beautiful blue on like an enamel tile around this boring black fireplace. Different, I mean, think, I think every single one's different. So they may well have just been hand painted rather than printed. And then we've got this beautiful bit of, a bit dusty. Lovely bit of ironwork around that as well. So I would say that this is one of the better rooms to look at within Kyball Twitching. Now to think of uh, some of the acts of debauchery that would have happened in these rooms. Um, in fact, I won't even put my mind there, nor my mouth. So um, you can imagine that if these walls could speak, just what random acts or of violence and of a sexual nature that these walls have probably seen. Not just by university folk, but also probably by townsfolk. It wasn't a specific place for university um, lecturers and students to um, visit ladies of the night. I believe it was just the, the city's, the city's location. Again, we've got a lovely bit of exposed beam just there. Again, all of these rooms have been done out so that the students can now frequent them. Again, another bit of exposed beam right there. Beautiful. Just have a little look at this window. Oh, I've never seen that before. Let's have a little, little look at that over there. I don't know if you can read that. I'll, I'll probably read it out for you. In fulfilment of the charitable intentions of John Parsons Esquire, Alderman of the city who died February the 12th, 1814. This Alms House for four poor men and four poor women was erected and endowed in the year 1816. So that building opposite us, it's got a little plaque down there as well. We'll have a little look at that on the way out. Um, but it looks, I've never, never noticed that sign before. I don't know if I can get a image of it all in one. Oh, there we can, there we go. There you go. So hopefully you can see that, especially now I've taken the flash off. Fantastic. Little things you didn't expect to find. Okay. So I apologise that it's, again, not the best place to look at, but there's some decent, there's Russell looking like a highwayman during these current times. I'm sorry there wasn't much to look at, um, but we never know what we're going to walk into. Um, you never know what we're going to walk into um, before we get the keys. Um, so it's very, very nice of Corpus Christi today. We must uh, a big thank you to them for allowing us into Kybal Twitching um, and into Beam Hall. Um, I've hoped you'd enjoyed coming down to uh, Magpie Lane, and it's a uh, 
lovely history with its name changes. Um, and I apologise for the French that I used at the start, but I, I couldn't avoid it. Um, I'll just take you outside now, um, and we'll just go and have a look at that little plaque on the other side of, of the road. Ross, you're going to be right closing up here. Yeah? Okay, so this is um, on the opposite side of Kaibol Street. This is, you can see the plaque or the inscription at the top there that we just looked at at the window. Um, it does, I remember, I remember seeing this plaque the other week. It says, in 1959, it's just here, this building became part of University College through the generosity of Helen and Frank Al oh. Alchol. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, of New York City, who built a new Parsons Almond House in St. Clements. So that's just giving you a little bit of history of that building. Um, as I say, that, that is University College down there, um, which hopefully we'll get allowed into at some point. Um, I do believe they've got squash courts, which, again, I've noticed in the other the back of Beam Hall, those are the squash courts um, at the end of Kaibog Street. Thank you for coming on this little walk with us today. Sorry... Um, Kaibol twitching doesn't have uh, more features, but obviously, again, it's probably like three, four hundred years ago um, that it was used as um, the place of residence for many prostitutes within Oxford. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and our little talk today. Don't forget to like and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and I really do hope you've enjoyed this video and you have a great rest of the day.